Danny White was announced as Tennessee's athletics director exactly one week ago today. Uh, I think I've been on the job for five days, something like that. Uh, it's been a, been, a, been a whirlwind. He's already hired his next football coach. It's Josh Heupel from UCF. So in a short period of time, Tennessee needed an AD and a coach, and now it's Central Florida who needs one of each. We had an exhaustive, exhaustive nationwide search. Uh, I know that sounds crazy because I'm hiring the guy that I've worked with for the last three years. What's up, y'all? I'm Matt Wyatt, helping you get more enjoyment out of watching football and offering some of my perspective as a broadcaster, former player. Welcome back to the channel. White, a guy who many thought would make an unexpected hire, ended up making the most obvious one, bringing his UCF coach with him to Knoxville. And on the surface, this may seem downright convenient, but I think there's more to it. I mentioned here on this channel in a previous video that I thought Tennessee needed to go in search of offense and a quarterback-centric coach. And I think they definitely got that with Hypo. We're going to play with tempo here. We're going to be the aggressor. We're going to play with our skilled players out in space. We're going to give them an opportunity to, to push the football down the field. I was looking at some numbers at his last couple of coaching stops, and Hypo has improved the total offense and passing numbers everywhere he's been. Take a look back at his time as offensive coordinator in the SEC East at Missouri. The year before Heupel arrived in 2015, Missouri's offense only put up a total of 3,300 yards and some change. You're talking about only 280 yards per game across a 12-game season. So Barry Odom and staff knew they had this young, talented quarterback named Drew Locke, and they just needed an offensive coach to come in and develop an offense around him. Enter Josh Heupel. In his first season calling plays in Columbia, the offense almost doubled the yards from the year before with over 6,000 yards of offense, 500 yards per game. They also scored 52 touchdowns in 2016, 36 more than a season earlier. In his second year running the Mizzou offense, they improved again in total yards, yards per game, and touchdowns. Then, if you look at his time as head coach at UCF the last three years, you notice something similar. Even though the losses went up in the overall record each of the last three seasons, the offensive yards per game went up from 524 per game in 2018 to 540 in 2019, and up to 568 yards per game this past season. Now, peel that onion down one more layer and look at what Heupel has done with quarterbacks. The best quarterback coaches in the country, guys like Dan Mullen, Lane Kiffin, Mike Leach, and Lincoln Riley, they all have things in common, some differences too, but one similarity is that throughout their careers, their quarterbacks improve from one year to the next. You almost never see those guys have a starter go backwards. The last couple of starting quarterbacks Heupel has coached have shown that upward trend. At UCF, Dylan Gabriel went from 59% completions in 2019 to 60% this year. Gabriel's touchdown to interception ratio went up from 29 and 7 in 2019 to 32 and 4 this year in spite of playing only 10 games. The passing yards per game for Gabriel went up from 281 to 357 per game this year. As Drew Locke's coach at Missouri in 2016 and 17, Heupel helped his numbers improve year over year. Locke's completion percentage, touchdowns, and yards per game all went up under Heupel. The offense for Heupel at Missouri, they used uh, tight ends a good bit. We'll watch a play here, tight end, off play action, getting in the middle of the field against the zone defense. And they had some big tight end targets, and it was one of those examples of you know, a coach like Heupel coaching to his personnel. You know, his offense hasn't always been cookie cutter. Some of the concepts are, but the personnel has been different. And like you say here, like here's a game against Georgia back in 2016 where they actually have double tights out of the shotgun. And it's just play action. Because of double tights in the formation, you're kind of getting a seven-man box. And that's what you're hoping is linebackers jump on the, the play action fake. And so when the ball goes in here like it's a zone run, linebacker comes flying up, tight end is free release against his zone coverage with two safeties in the middle of the field. He's going to get in that void right in the middle, kind of in this hole of the defense, and it's a quarterback's job to get him the football in that hole. And you can see him fitting it in there. So he split two linebackers. He's in front of and between two safeties, and there's your opportunity for a completion. So, you know, play action football, find the man. 
Come back, uh, we'll look at some more here. This is one getting out of the backfield. I saw this earlier as I was kind of, you know, just going back and watching some of the offense at Missouri under Heupel. Uh, they ran the ball pretty well at times, uh, but they still, you know, would spread the field. Here's three by one, three to the left, single receiver to the right. Georgia bringing five, four down, and a fifth off the edge, but it's not picked up in protection. You have five linemen, you know, so if this thing gets handed off here to the backside, you have enough to protect, but the back is getting out free. Because of pressure on the edge, he's looking to dump it off. It's sort of meshing, if you wanted to call it that, crossing here underneath, using the running back. Um, so it's almost like an outlet, the way it works with a blitzing linebacker who doesn't get picked up. Turns into a big play. Just hit him running. A lot of crossing routes, and they're definitely... And when you look at his offense, some air raid concepts in there. Here's a similar deal with a tight end in the red zone. Uh, again, running vertical off of a play action. The formation is different. They're really spreading it out. Two receivers out on the numbers. Another outside the numbers, basically standing on the sideline. But little play action right there. And the hope, again, is that you get at least one linebacker involved in jumping on that. Get their eyes on the possibility of run. Helps the tight end find that throwing lane. And it also did kind of bring that safety up just a little bit. They're riding that play fake. So you see the defense starting to collapse. Meanwhile, tight end's got free release right here. So just play action, pull them up, drill it to the big guy, and touchdown. Here's another one. Hypo coaching at Missouri back in 2016, his first year inside vertical in that slot receiver. He's really way off the hash there when you look at it. Drill him in front of that safety and big play. Now, this has a lot to do with the quarterback. And Drew Locke did this a bunch in his career. That's throw that middle, you know, inside vertical, reading safeties. But, again, they're spreading the field out. It gets you really five, maybe six in the box. They're in a cover two look where corners are, you know, up. Safeties are on the hashes back off the screen that you can't quite see. And so they go... Two by two, the route that they're using right here looks to me like you've got inside vertical to, you know, threaten safeties, inside vertical, threaten safeties, read that middle of the field if you want to. Looks like you're getting vertical or read go on the outside. And if you notice, this is his outlet. Watch what the outside receiver does up here uh, into the boundary. He doesn't even move. Ball snapped. He just stands up like, I'm going to stand here and be your, um, your outlet on this third down play. But because it's zone, you get release behind the linebacker in front of that safety, and can the quarterback drill it in there, able to do it. So it's spread concept, you know, three by one uh, or two by two personnel, and they did a lot of that. Okay, this is UCF this year in 2020, and you can see they gave Cincinnati a, a ball game. They, they had a shot at a top 10 ranked Cincinnati team. Cincinnati, that 3-3-5 defense, and so UCF ran the ball at them some. Here's one of those where they're popping it for a big run uh, out the backside. And what this is is pulling the center and the guard and leading that back around here to the right. Now, we don't get the whole snap, but this is actually the right guard stepping down on the nose. This is right tackle and getting help on the outside, getting a chip there from the tight end. That guard stepping down on the nose, center snaps it and pulls around in the hole. He's followed by left guard, and that's your lead here, right here on this power run uh, against a three-man front. Now, box you're only going to get at times five players in that box, so they pull them in there, block them up, and run that thing against it, pressure that front. He's had some really balanced offenses in the past. You know, here's one that's uh, – we don't see the – Entire route, but you can get a little bit of a glimpse at, at coverage. There are two by two. There's one receiver who's off the screen here. But I'll see this a lot in Josh Heupel offenses, and that is spreading it all the way to the sideline. I mean, we're putting the outside receiver way outside the numbers. Down here, he's kind of outside the numbers. I believe if we look at it, he actually goes outside release and finds that void against what is a zone defense. I think, I can't see all of it. It looks like maybe this is quarters coverage where this is deep half and you have quarter, quarter deep coverage. I uh, can't quite see all of it on the screen. But again, against zone, it's kind of 
you know, spread concepts and a little air raid in there too and running to open grass. If they're going to zone it, we're going to find the grass and throw it in there. And uh, as we said, you know, those guys have gotten better year after year. They threw the ball well. They really did a lot well in the Cincinnati game. Okay, so, you know, see here it's a two-score game uh, late fourth quarter, and they're about to cut it to one score in this Cincinnati game. A little combination down here against, uh, you know, expecting to get some type of man-to-man, -man, and this is a really neat concept that they run for this touchdown. We'll watch it first, and they kind of stalk it and hit that inside receiver, and you go, you know, it was an odd-looking route because he paused, stem it up, you know, into the defender and then kind of pause right there. But if you look what they're doing, is trying to make this look like a pick play. Okay, this is very intentional with one, you know, the outside receiver coming in, I'm getting in the area of, uh, of my own teammate here, who it looks like, okay, I'm gonna rub route off of him or pick play off of him and try to get him open, right? And watch what this guy does. He very intentionally fakes, like he's going to the outside, to make his defender think, oh, they're running pick play. We either have to switch it or I've got to, you know, um, go around the top and cover him, but it's not a pick. And as soon as he fakes out this way, his defender jumps and now he's wide open to the inside. So they are actually giving the illusion of a pick to make that defender jump outside, boom. One little outside step right there from this receiver get him out of the lane, make him think, we're, I'm coming around to rub right off my teammate. He's trying to anticipate it, come over here and cover me. And instead he just basically runs himself right out of my lane. I turn it right back in here and I'm just wide open on this slant for a touchdown. Really neat play call and design and executed really well. Get a good look at it here. Over here to your left, right over my head if you're watching the video. So watch the outside move. So it's obviously man to man. That's what they're expecting. Pause, boom, make him think, I'm, about, I'm stepping this way, I'm about to go around and run the pick. He jumps all over it, and now I'm wide open for the score. Great design. They got him a touchdown. They wind up, uh, I think, going for two here. Yeah, I made it a five point game. And here's another fake to get an open receiver for the two-point conversion and here's what I mean by that you know let's see so this is this year but over the last two three years we've seen this a lot on goal line plays and two-point plays this deal where we're gonna throw it to a motioning receiver behind the line of scrimmage therefore it's legal for these guys to be blocking out in front of it because it's a screen we're completing it back here behind the line of scrimmage so we give the illusion that that's what we're doing like we're gonna block out front and throw it to him and try to screen him into the end zone. But instead, we're gonna pump fake that, get these defenders to jump all over it, and then at least one, if not two, we're gonna bypass them, run right by them. It's just like getting them to jump on a bubble screen on a pump and go. So if you look, watch the quarterback, watch his action and the receiver. Boom, pump fake, just a little shoulder fake is all it takes from the quarterback. They've stepped up. They think we're getting blocked. We turn them completely loose because we're not getting blocked. And he's open in the back of the end zone. Look at it one more time since I drew all over it. <laughs> we'll look at it in slow-mo. So keep your eyes right here. It looks like he's going to block, pump fake, they jump it. Now I'm wide open in the back of the end zone. So back-to-back -back play calls that I really, really like. And that cut it down to a uh, three-point ball game late in the fourth quarter. Good play call there and, you know, having a little fun when you can execute that kind of stuff. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And hey, did you enjoy this video? Well, if so, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. New videos are posted here almost every day. And another request, likes on YouTube really help more than you may know. So if you wouldn't mind, Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.